let's look at this in a little more friendly way. If we get rid of that guy, we look at our auto rig component. The first thing we notice, if we look at our viewport, is that we've lost our geometry. We've come from a packed folder. We've got our box uh, and our root joint. But now we've fed it into this auto rig component and it's gone. Well, why is that? And the reason is kind of strange but obvious at the same time. We're defining functionality with Apex. And the functionality of display my geometry isn't defined yet. We haven't told Apex that we want to look at geometry. And that's why I have this little other auto rig component right after the FK saying bone deform. So this is the apex graph or the addition to the apex graph that we're asking apex show our deformed geometry. If we go back, if you watch the graph down here, we have this bone deformation node. But if I go and display and select this one, the bone deformation node is gone. So that's why we don't see any geometry in our viewport, is because we are uh, creating rig functionality, and we haven't, at, at this point, the FK node, we haven't defined uh, a fun the functionality of displaying geometry. But it's fine, because we don't really need to do that right now. So let's close this for a moment. And let's have a tr closer look at our auto rig component that we're using FK transform. I can close this up. So the next parameter here is rig. And we're saying rig source add or update, and then we're giving it a name. Well, we don't have a rig here in our packed folder. If we look at our rig tree, we have a base skeleton, a base shape, and a guide skeleton. But if we continue to look at our rig tree and we select our auto rig component, we can see that something new has appeared, this base rig. And this is where um, Apex is defining our rig. It's putting all of those graphs, those nodes together and defining this sort of thing that we've packed together with the other things. This one is a base rig. And in this case, because we don't have one already, um, we're using add or update. If we had one already, we could update it. So we could you know, add to these things. The other options are from input um, or add or replace. But in this case, we just want to add. And the name of the rig that we want to add is base rig. And that's, again, using that sort of default name of base and guides. So let's move on. Uh, we've seen that just by adding this, we now have a base rig, and that's where we're going to store all of our rig functionality. Uh, this advanced one is uh, more to do with the graph, so we're going to skip that for now. And then each component, each of these components, which are the built-in ones, have their own set of parameters. And so let's have a look at that that on settings. <clears throat> this guide source, um, the default is guides.skeleton. So again, um, th that's the reason that I'm using this guides.skeleton here, because I know that the FK uh, transform auto rig component is going to look for guides.skeleton. So the guide source is the guides.skeleton, but we also have this source tab. So let's look at that. We also have skeleton guide source dot skeleton and then we have the joint group. And here it's just uh, basically anything with a name. And in our case that's our root joint. So why do we have a guide source and a source page? Well this is part of what being in beta means is that some of these things uh, are holdovers from early development um, sometimes certain decisions haven't been finalized on, on what these things should be called. Um, but for the moment, you can 
see that we have a source and we have a guide source and they have tool tips and there's a little bit of information in the documentation but essentially what's going on here is that the auto rig component um, the FK transform is giving you an opportunity to create a guide skeleton if you don't have one so if in this case we didn't have this guide skeleton um, the auto rig component would help us out and, and make one for us um, now I have to reattach that and because this is changed I need to whoops have to fill this in again so that is a skeleton so that's what this um, the guide source and the source page or rather the source tab are allowing us to do um, hopefully the the strangeness of this will be cleared up uh, as apex comes out of beta uh, but that's what's going on and you can look at the documentation to find out the specifics of that in my case because it i have a guide skeleton and it's correctly named um, i don't have to worry about this so let's look at the settings then this is um, mostly about uh, adding nodes and, and configuring them for our graph because after all all of these components are adding or manipulating our graph and we can see if we go to the apex network view and look at this auto rig component what do we have here in our graph and and let's try and find parameters that make sense when we look at our graph so we have parameters we have this transform object that has the name of root well we know that our root joint is a transform object so that clearly indicates something to do with our rig and our animation and it has things like a transform it has a translate rotate and a scale a local transform and a rest transform transform orders so this is clearly something that we are going to be manipulating or using to move our root joint around and you can see that the result of this the transform that comes out of this node is going into the set point transform here so it's taking the rest skeleton which is our base skeleton and then it's transforming the points according to this transform object and then output is base skeleton but we can see that there's no connections here there's no inputs to this translate rotator scale so what's going on here why why do we not have this connection if we look at our, our settings over here we can see this again is mostly to do with creating nodes um, in the in the network here but our output skeleton you can see this is our base skeleton and then we have tags and it says bind we, we can talk about that later and then we have a visualizer which is basically uh, allowing us to change how we see the graph we can discard disregard that for a moment we've talked about our source let's talk about our controls so if we rearrange this again to see things more clearly uh, we can see that our controls we have a um, parm node name and an output node name well we have parms and output here parms and output so that makes sense but below that we have a t promote group r promote group s promote group well tr and s that's clearly our transform rotate and scale but we don't have anything specified here so it makes sense that we have nothing connected here let's promote everything so star now you can see that our graph jumped it changed and that change was adding this root transform parameter and connecting it to our t our translate of our transform object so now in our viewport if we select that and we hit enter we should see down there we can't even select it but we're now we're in our animate state we can see we have a selection set 
and we have all controls base one. Let's select that and we can see that, yeah, it's a little handle and we can move it around. But this is clearly not what we want. This is all sort of terrible, actually. Let's undo that and escape out of the animate state. And if we look at our deform and do this again, back into the animate state, base one. Here we go. So now we're actually animating with our root joint, animating our box. And the bone deform in this case, uh, we'll look at it in a second, but it's basically, as I said earlier, it's saying to, to Apex, provide the functionality of displaying this deformed geometry in the viewport. Back at our auto rig component, you can see that the um, trans translation has been promoted, but not the rotate or the scale. And we can kind of do this live. If you watch the connections here, I'm going to promote the rotation and the scale. So again, star, star. And now we have all three connected up. And so if we go back to the animate state and we look at our base control, now we have translate, rotate, and scale. I should probably do it here. So translate, rotate, and scale. So that's how we're able to separate <clears throat> the logic of this from the execution of it, because we've created the logic here, but we're not asking Houdini to do anything. We're just saying these are some things that this joint can do. and when we're in the animate state, that's when we're asking Apex to execute, and it's executing this functionality. And it's, be, it's interesting to see, if we minimize this again, if we look at our auto rig component FK, <clears throat> go to our geometry spreadsheet, we can see that we don't really have all those parameters or all those attributes that we had before. And that's because we're looking at the entire character. We're looking at, um, in this case, character stream. And in this, we could look at the component script. And the component script is what we're adding to our graph. And so here we have all these crazy attributes. We have all these callback attributes. We have some familiar things like name, but we have parms and properties and tags. And we'll look at what these are a little more closely later. But if you read through some of these things, you can kind of get a sense of what's going on here. Um, we have a callback to extract the character graph. We have a callback to update the character graph, uh, find character element, update character element. So these are actions. These are things that a graph is doing. And that graph um, is finding things like the base skeleton and like these parameters. And it's um, updating them. And so that's what these components are doing. They're creating. Uh, a graph and storing it using geometry um, in our rig. And then later on, when we want to animate in the animate state, we then execute that functionality. So let's continue on. So we want to get to a, an animatable thing at the end of all of this. So we've looked at the FK, uh, the forward kinematic and we've looked at the deform briefly. Um, oh, I should mention on the uh, FK, the forward kinematic transform, we had one more parameter uh, set of parameters, and that's shape. Currently, 
we don't have a control. It was, you could see that it was difficult for me to select that root. I had to go into the selection set and find the base and move that around. And the reason is because we don't have a control here. And even if we did, its scale is zero. So there's no way that we can see it. Well, we're going to solve that in a moment. And there's a number of ways to add a, a control shape. We'll see that in a later video. But for now, we'll just move on to the deform, because it's quite simple. So the component that it's um, adding to our rig is the bone deform. And we saw, if we look at our apex network, we look at the FK component, all it's doing is adding this transform object. And permission denied because it thought that I was trying to uh, shake this node free. This is just a read-only environment right now. But if we select the deform, you can see a couple of things have happened. Uh, we have this new node rest promote, and it's a geometry node. So we're bringing in a new thing, base shape. That's interesting. We're still doing our transform that came from our auto rig component, um, the FK IK transform. We have a point transform here, and then we have a bone deformation. And that bone deformation is taking the difference in the point transforms and performing the deformation. And then the output of that is going to base shape. So our FK auto rig component is allowing us to change uh, the root joint. And our bone deform auto rig component is allowing us to also change our geometry, our base shape. And it's this layering on top of one another, these discrete bits of functionality uh, that is rigging in Apex.